Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral on this Wednesday, October the 13th. I'm Rose Duncan, the Canon for Worship, and it is truly a blessing that you have decided to join us this day for the service of prayer and reflection. Let us pray. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear these words from a portion of Psalm 62. For God alone my soul in silence waits. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will you assail me to crush me, all of you together, as if you were a leaning fence, a toppling wall? They seek only to bring me down from my place of honor. Lies are their chief delight. They bless with their lips, but in their hearts they curse. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. And God is my safety and my honor. God is my rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading comes from the 11th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. But woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and herbs of all kinds and neglect justice and the love of God. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting others. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love to have the seat of honor in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces. Woe to you, for you are like unmarked graves, and people walk over them without realizing it. One of the lawyers answered him, Teacher, when you say these things, you insult us too. And he said, Woe also to you lawyers, for you load people with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not lift a finger to ease them. In the gospel for today, Jesus pronounces a series of woes against the Pharisees and lawyers. These were members of the religious establishment, remember, who had become the de facto interpreters of the law during the 400 years before Jesus, when the prophetic voice stood silent. Now, we must remember that when Moses gave the Israelites the commandments of God, they numbered just 10. However, by the time of Jesus, the Jews held 613 laws. So why does Jesus single out the Pharisees and lawyers for some rather strong words? Well, let's start with the word woe, which can be translated also as alas. It is as much an expression of sorrowful pity as it is of anger. So why did Jesus lament and issue such a stern rebuke? Jesus took issue with the religious leaders because they failed to listen to God's word and they misled the people they were supposed to guide into the ways of God. The scribes devoted their lives to the study of law, the law of God, and regarded themselves as legal experts in it. They divided the Ten Commandments and precepts into thousands of tiny rules and regulations. Jesus is angry with the Pharisees because many of them were full of pretension with their external actions, were very much different from what they were to profess. They commanded the people to do this and that, yet they themselves were not willing. Jesus calls them out for their status-seeking ways and says it all in public. 
Now they expect people to look up to them and to give them special honors because of their supposed higher level of religious observance. They expect to be given front seats in the synagogue and for people to greet them in a submissive and groveling manner in the streets. But beneath all of it, Jesus objects to the deviation and neglect of the central commands of God in favor of commonly held practices, which of course were human interpretations. Because by their narrow-minded and nitpicking interpretations of the law, they really made it difficult for ordinary people to keep it, while they themselves did nothing to help. Moreover, they added rules and regulations to the law, did nothing to help people keep them, and they found ways for themselves to get around them. In their misguided zeal, they required unnecessary and burdensome rules, which obscured the more important matters of religion, such as the love of God and the love of neighbor. They were leading people to themselves rather than pointing to God. Jesus used the example of tithing to show how far they had missed the mark. God had commanded a tithe of the first fruits of one's labors as an expression of thanksgiving and honor for God's providential care for God's people. But the religious leaders, however, went to extreme lengths to tithe on insignificant things such as tiny plants with great mathematical accuracy. They were very attentive to minute matters of little importance, but they neglected to care for the needy and the weak, the important things for God's heart. So for example, when Jesus condemns the Pharisees, he does so because they pay tithes of mint and of rue and of every garden herb, but do not pay attention to judgment and to the love of God. Jesus admonished them because their hearts were not right. So what can we draw from Jesus' message today? Well, the essence of God's commandment is love. Love of God and love of neighbor. God is love, and everything God does flows from God's love for us. Love is sacrificial. It both embraces and lifts the burdens of others. Perhaps we should ask ourselves, do I allow the love of God to transform my mind, my heart? Jesus lived every word that he preached and reflected God's love as a model for us. May we pray this day that the Holy Spirit grants us the wisdom and courage to act with justice and love in all that we say and all that we do. Amen. And now may we offer the prayers of our hearts. We pray for God's grace. Lord, receive our praise and hear our prayer. Lord God, through your grace, we are your people. Through your Son, you have redeemed us. In your spirit, you have made us your own. We pray for the church. Make our hearts respond to your love. Lord, receive our praise and hear our prayer. We pray for the world. Make our lives bear witness to your glory in all of creation. Lord, receive our praise and hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and those in need. Make our wills eager to obey and our hands ready to heal. Lord, receive our praise and hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the many blessings we have received. Make our voices one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Lord, receive our praise and hear our prayer. And let us now commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth, giving you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the wonderful works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen.